Tonight on 8 out of 10 Cats, the Bear Necessities, it's Bear Grylls. Newcastle Clown, it's Chris Ramsey. And their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, Blonde Bombshell, Patsy Kenzie. Jordy for sure, it's Sarah Milliken. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Kyle! Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, on average, British men spend £1,412 on an engagement ring? They would have spent less, but the grabby metal crane game at the fun fair kept losing its grip. <laughs> 33% of Brits think Mount Everest is in Europe, which I'm guessing means it isn't. <laughs> Bloody idiots. <laughs> and one in five Brits has sent a racy text message to the wrong person. I once wrote an explicit text to my girlfriend's mum, but somehow I sent it to my girlfriend by mistake. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John, Sarah, Patsy, what have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> it's the end of the news of the world. They're closing the news of the world just in case the allegations are true. <laughs> it's a bit of a clue that they might be. It's a bit like saying, I can't be sure my flatmate was lying when he said he didn't drink the last of the milk, but I have had him killed anyway. <laughs> But it's good news, isn't it? End of the news. Of the it's well, just—it's always a bit dodgy when you walk in a news agent and all of the newspapers have got the same story apart from one. That headline just says, "Look over there." <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's got to a point now where paedophiles watching this scandal unfold can take the moral high ground. <laughs> 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 what I did was wrong, <laughs> but I didn't phone up dead soldiers' parents. You know, it, it, that's how bad it is, and I think that they had no choice but to get rid of the news of the world. It, 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 no choice but to, for it to go. But what's odd is that none of the editors are being, are being sacrificed. And it's a bit weird, these editors who said, I, don't, I didn't know anything about this. It's a bit like a butcher holding up a leg of lamb and going, what, they killed a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've been in the tabloids a lot over the years. Have the News of the World ran stories about you? Well, I stopped buying the papers about 15 years ago. Because did you run it... out of money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did generally stop because like, you can't start your day like that, you know, because it's even if it's not true or it's got some semblance of truth, it's, it's not, you know, it's not healthy. When it was famous people, when it was, you know, Sienna Miller and it, was, and it was Jude Law, I think everyone sort of think, well, it's okay, that's the game that they're in. Yeah. When it's bereaved families well, it's and the families of soldiers, that's people all... go, well, they can fuck off. The question is, how far? <laughs> well, I think you put that very succinctly, and I, I can't really add to that, you know? <laughs> so how pleased are you today is really what I'm getting at. I you don't... Do I mean, it's, as you say, it's a dark day, I guess, for, for them, you know? But it's, a, it's a dark day for evil journalists. Jimmy, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, diplomatic about it. I mean, it's awful and it's right, but, you Don't know. be diplomatic. They shut it down. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think about Andy Coulson being arrested this morning? It's an astonishing fall from grace for him because he was the Prime Minister's press secretary. Within a year, he's potentially going to court. And then the fun begins. <laughs> if they've arrested him, then they have to do um, Rebecca Brooks as well. Because if he's, he's is, as implicated as she is, so she has to be arrested as well. Unless there's some kind of uh, old law on the statue books about ginger women. <laughs> It's a funny old a statue. A ginger woman is allowed to hack into your phone if she's a mile <laughs> from St Paul's Cathedral. <laughs> Incredible, we've discovered this old law. <laughs> Rebecca Brooks, there's already footage of her in the inquiry last time. They say, did you pay the police? And she went, yeah! <laughs> and no one did anything then. I mean, how far do you have to go where she's on camera in front of an inquiry set up to find out whether she paid the police? Going, yeah, I paid the police, yeah. <laughs> I paid them loads of money and they told me loads of stuff. And they went, oh, well, off you go and carry on being a dickhead. Cameron as well, Cameron's involved in it. He had dinner at Christmas and they won't, they won't say... He had dinner at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> the man's a monster! <laughs> no, Jimmy, Jimmy, I hadn't finished the sentence. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're the one looking stupid now. I have no idea. I'm sorry, Sean. He had dinner at Christmas in a tutu. He was wearing a tutu and he was riding a pig. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, flying a kite. So there, and I win. Um, no, he had dinner at Christmas with, uh, with James Murdoch and uh, Rebecca Brooks, but they won't say whether it was Christmas lunch or not, which is quite significant lunch to have with someone, isn't it, of, of that power, just when this deal was about to go through. But they said they won't reveal whether it was Christmas Eve, Christmas Day or Boxing Day, which just sounds so shady, doesn't it? Well, why would you say, where did you spend Christmas? Well, I can't reveal that. <laughs> I feel it would suggest I'm a bit too close to my family and I don't want people to know that. <laughs> But I don't know why they called it the news of the world. Anyway, because the last thing they were interested in was news from around the world. <laughs> the only thing they were interested in was tits and bums <laughs> and who's been near them. <laughs> I liked it. Do you think that people who used to buy it uh, for the tits would always say that they were buying it for the news, but now you're better off saying that you're just... I just I only buy it for the tits. <laughs> It's been shit for years, though, hasn't it? They've been hacking people's phones and going to every death, and they still just... It's just crap. Like, and uh, the reason it's crap is because people buy it because they give away good stuff. Like, if this weekend, if they said, we're sorry for what we did, but basically we've got Macaulay Culkin back to do another Home Alone film, <laughs> and it's free in the news of the world, forgive and forget. Time to do <laughs> And if they offered everybody who'd been hacked £10 top-up on their phone? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the, the last one, though, what's the headline going to be of the last one this Sunday? Something really innocent, like, British plum growers report <laughs> bumper harvest. <laughs> <laughs> See, pages four to nine. <laughs> no, man, without any advertising, it's going to be a postcard on Sunday. It's literally going to be all the advertisers have pulled out. They've all gone. Yeah. Yeah, even EasyJet have took the moral high ground. A company that... <laughs> imagine that. A company that primarily just fires slags across Europe. <laughs> I think the people who would be most pleased about this are footballers because they can have a lie-in on a Sunday morning now. <laughs> when, the, when the news of the world was around, they used to have to get up and get down the shops and buy every coffee before their wife woke up. <laughs> I feel a bit sorry for Ryan Giggs. He must have got so used to having people around him all the time and he'll wake up tomorrow morning and just be nobody outside his house. <laughs> Hello! I'm still an asshole. <laughs> uh, let's have a look and see whether the news of the world is one of the most talked about things this week. Of course, of course. The news of the world have a massive scoop this Sunday and they're going to use it to fill their paper with shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Sting, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Um, Kate and... Well, I don't know why they are, but apparently Kate and Wills have uh, been in the news because they went to Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, so. What do you mean, woo? <laughs> Is that this country gets kind of semi-enthusiastic about it, but America go... I mean, it's crazy, crazy news over there. It's like the front of every magazine. Different and... countries! Huh? America and Canada are different. You sound exactly the same, pet. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a boring story. You've got the two most boring people in the world go yeah. to the most boring country. Yeah. <laughs> But Canada is boring. Even their transvestites are women. <laughs> <laughs> That's how boring it is. But I liked it. There was that the Canadian pop star who didn't call him the Duke of Cambridge. She called him the, the douche of Cambridge. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. And then went, and apparently William looked and laughed. Yeah. You can imagine him going, cut off her head. Yeah. <laughs> He's so dull, he wouldn't. What he'd do, he just goes, oh, like that. <laughs> When you see Kate and Woods, you were watching, I was thinking, kick a moose or know, something. Kick a moose. <laughs> Be rude to an Inuit, piss up against a totem pole, do something. <laughs> well, you do watching, something. watching them, I just uh, think... You're wrong, uh, we got, we got, uh, they've got so many Brits who do all of that. It's good no. that somebody kind of, you know, they're, no, they well, they're, they're, right, they're, 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 for a million pound, I'd want to be paintballing on the moon. <laughs> paintballing on the moon would be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you spoil everything. <laughs> they're just... They're, they're about to make up stuff for them to do because them doing normal things isn't... They went to meet a tribe called the Micmac tribe, <laughs> which is obviously made up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, 
what, what these get, they, they make their own mints. So what you need to do is get a tic tac knick knack from the Micmac. <laughs> <laughs> Micmac sounds like they're half Irish, half Scottish, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, they're heavy drinkers. <laughs> he, even, he even landed a plane on a lake, and he yeah. made that look dull. But they said, they said no, it was yes. amazing that he landed a plane on a lake because uh, there's only a handful of British people that can actually do that. I think, yeah, because we haven't all got. Helicopters, it was a helicopter, wasn't it? We haven't all got lakes or helicopters. <laughs> no, I can reverse park a micro. <laughs> <laughs> they had a holiday during the middle of this tour. I was thinking, when they have a holiday, how do they know they're having a holiday? <laughs> What's the difference between holiday and work? The only difference is, at the end of the day, when they're working, they go, oh, bloody hell, I'm really tired of unveiling stuff. <laughs> My unveiling fingers really... <laughs> Oh, dear, if I have to lift another tiny little flag over a plaque. <laughs> That's the other thing as well, they're praising them for doing more than that. Oh, it's amazing how Kate, she just went up to this girl and talked to her. <laughs> as if she was like another human being that spoke the same language. It's you, amazing. You can't talk to girls, John. So. No. <laughs> 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 That's why we put the two girls on your team. We thought we'd give you a chance. We've paid women to talk to you. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, this week, Kate and William have toured Canada. Prince William is a dashing helicopter pilot, a mega-rich heir to the throne, with a beautiful wife who commands the affection of an entire nation. If you're watching, William, I have to admit, you're better than me in almost every conceivable way. Well done, Baldy. <laughs> it is receding by, literally, by the hour, isn't it? <laughs> you can just see it as you're going... He's unveiling his head. <laughs> OK, one more story to get. Fingers on buzzers. Um, Harry Potter. Ooh, are you excited about it? Well, my youngest son is. I mean, I'm excited for him, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, good, clean fun, right? You say it's clean, but there's a <laughs> raunchy kiss. Apparently, apparently so, yeah. Apparently. Emma Watson says this is the most anticipated kiss in history, which is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Huge, huge obsession for people. I mean, I took my youngest son, we went to Universal Studios, and you can kind of get, get your head around it when it's like an, an 11 year old wanting to wear the, you know, Hogwarts cape and the, the, the tie and buying the wand and getting on the ride with all the gear. I mean, it's a bit weird, but you know, you've got <laughs> grown up people. I mean, there's a certain type of person that l goes to theme parks as a grown up on <coughs> their own, I think. It's. it's <laughs> <laughs> but these, there's these adults in, the, in all the gear. And they're screaming and shouting on the right, because you sit on a bank of, like, four, one extra than this, and they're, you know, these grown-ups are going, yeah, man, go, go, let's go, come on, Harry. And it's, and you're looking at these people thinking, where have you, who are, why? I mean, it's just the, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a real come-down for the actors, though, isn't it? Because their, their lives are not going to be as glamorous, you know, because the special effects in Panto aren't that great. <laughs> you're going, Daniel, when you fly, Big Dave's going to pull on the rope. <laughs> And you have to make the whooshing noise yourself. <laughs> OK, it's a big day. <laughs> he's going to spend that 48 million. And in 20 years' time, he's with the Chuckle Brothers and Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe was asked uh, what advice he would give uh, to his younger self. And he said, don't try too hard to be something you're not, which is the essence of acting. <laughs> <laughs> If I could go back and talk to my younger self, I'd say, don't worry about anything. In the future, you invent a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> it is bad news for British industry, cos one of the things you have to credit J.K. Rowling with, she insisted the films be made in this country. So all those films, largely, uh, British crew worked on them. Well, British they, production yeah. houses. Well, maybe she should write another... another she should string it out a bit. That would be, that would be a well, good no, thing. Well, no, she didn't... Well, you, we know, are, it's not, you, know, you know she didn't write it, don't you? You know that, don't you? Is it a... It's a biography. She met this guy called Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> he was working in a coffee shop, and she just basically... She wrote down his life story. Is it really a true...? Yeah, it's a true story, even the bit at the end. 
Even the bit at the end. The bit he, with the thing with the guy. Yeah, you know how he dies from the eats the peanut. It turns out all along he had a peanut out of him. Let's have a look and see whether Harry Potter is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, the premiere for the final Harry Potter film was last night. The baddie in Harry Potter is referred to as he who must not be named, presumably because he's shagging Ryan Giggs's sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> So the other round, uh, Sean Bear and Chris have one point. John, Patsy and Sarah have two. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. Sean, Bear and Chris, your turn first. What do you like the look of? Well, we've got Bear grills on, so we'll go for the man trying to start fire. OK, here's your question. Most people believe they could survive alone for a week in the wilderness. True or false? Mm. Um, they probably believe it, but they probably wouldn't. Yeah, but I would. <laughs> no, no, I just, I've watched. No, I've I've watched nearly all of your. I've got. I am genuinely a massive fan. I've watched nearly all your shows, and it seems like nothing can't be solved by drinking your own piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's very overrated drinking your own pee. All right, I, <laughs> the worst one I had was uh, I killed a snake in the desert and I skinned it, and I, I thought I'd pee inside the skin and keep it as like a water bottle around my neck and. Yeah. And then about a day later, after being kind of in the heat of the desert, and I Dude. drank it, and it was like mix all the snake innards, and I thought this really is a bad cocktail. Drinking your own urine is meant to be good for you. I, I uh, nonsense. I put my back out. <laughs> <laughs> my favourite episode of your show was when you literally just got out of your helicopter. Well, you got over it. You walked down the hill. You found some bear poo, and you got a bit of apple out of it. And you went, oh, yeah, apple. And you washed it with your water. And you ate it immediately. I thought, you've just got off the helicopter! <laughs> oh, you already home! Put it in your bag! Chris, Chris, if you think that's bad, have a look at this. In hot climates, if you try to walk in the heat of the day with no water, you may last no more than four hours. But if it's a choice between life and death, there's a survival trick I was shown by an old ranger. One thing you can do if you're stuck out here with no water source at all is actually drink the fluid from a fresh elephant dung. Pretty disgusting, but it could save your life. <laughs> it's a real last resort. Yeah. There can be harmful bacteria in that water, but if you have nothing oh. else to drink, it could buy you extra time. <laughs> the, worst bit was when... the worst bit was when that lump actually did drop off and then that, was a... that wasn't meant to happen. That was the but... worst bit about, yeah. <laughs> about drinking the dung water. <laughs> it, was, it was a range you told me this, but I always think of the range. I bet he's seen it now on TV and go, that idiot, you believe me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it seems like a, a, an unnecessary step. I've actually written a survival book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's real. The unique feature about my survival book is it's edible. <laughs> there it goes, day one, eat page one. <laughs> <laughs> eat page two. <laughs> page nine, don't eat this, it's poisonous. And, uh... <laughs> seem to make any puddings, that's what always bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> it's always... <laughs> well, you know, I understand that you can, you know, eat a squirrel or whatever, or, you know, suck some things poo, but... <laughs> There's nothing similar to angel delight. <laughs> What's the worst thing you, you've, you've eaten to stay alive? The worst is probably raw goat's testicles, or, as you'll know, big yak eyeballs was bad. Now, actually, the camel intestinal <laughs> fluids from a camel intestines, that was the yeah. worst. I would have, I think the it. eyeball would be worse for me because he'd be looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Being difficult to get down. The amazing thing is it doesn't really digest, so when it comes out the other end, if it's a, you know, it's... <laughs> What wouldn't you do then? Would you, like those guys that, that went down, the plane went down in the Andes and they had to eat each other, would you eat another human being to stay alive? <laughs> what a question, you know. I mean, I'm, you know, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, you if definitely I... would. Yes! <laughs> it's not a difficult Unless question. Listen, most of us go, no, I wouldn't, I'd rather die. <laughs> it's a difficult question if you're well, a I maniac. If I, if, I, <laughs> if I was with my kids and I died, I think I'd want my kids to eat me if it kept them alive. OK, so what, what do you think? Most people think they could survive alone for a week in the wilderness, true or false? Yeah, I think kind of people, are, you know, see it and they'd be excited to give it a go, so um, I think people would hope that they'd be able to survive. OK, and, and what do you think? I think yes. I, I think most people would think that they could. I think true. We think yes, true. I can tell you the answer is true. 63% of people think they could survive for a week in the wilderness.
If I was lost in the wilderness, I'd stay warm by shaking with fear and I'd get water by drinking my own endless stream of tears. Easy. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. Best way to mend a broken heart. Kill again. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you can take your passport, go to the airport, you get on the first flight, you arrive in Leeds... <laughs> you phone around and go, Ha! Ah, I'm in Leeds! Yeah! Dream on, baby. <laughs> you start again. <laughs> if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. <laughs> Best way to mend a broken heart? Eat cholesterol-lowering foods. No. <laughs> okay. yeah. well, it's good. a practical survival guide. <laughs> Is it, um, eat trifle with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, in all seriousness, have you eaten trifle with your hands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was it better than with cutlery? There wasn't any cutlery. It wasn't by choice, John. How was yeah. there trifle and not cutlery? What world do you... <laughs> <laughs> they got one and I couldn't wait till I got in. <laughs> I got the most of it in. There must be a point when you've kind of had enough and you're just covered in trifle <laughs> and you've got <laughs> half a trifle left. You think, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> in the old days, someone to get over a broken heart would join the Foreign Legion to forget. Yes. Mm. And I, I, I had to go out with someone once. I wasn't that fussed, so I just became a community support officer. <laughs> 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 Forget, Brian. <laughs> Is it have sex with a much younger man? <laughs> Just guessing. Uh... I tried that, and it, if anything, it made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. You were quite close with the with the going to Leeds well, thing. Find yourself like gap year travelling, backpacking. I'll give you that. <laughs> you know, yes. <laughs> yes, the best way to mend a broken heart is to go on holiday. I remember I was heartbroken after my relationship with Kira Knightley ended. I guess it was my fault, cos I was seeing Halle Berry behind Kira's back and the stress of keeping both those relationships from Megan Fox got too much for me. <laughs> so I went away on a little holiday, which my family booked for me using two doctors and a magistrate. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are... Sean's team have three points, John's team have three points, which means it's a draw. Everyone's a winner. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and for all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Wednesday. That's it from us. Good night. It's a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, a new report claims 99% of fish could be wiped out in a mass extinction? On the plus side, that will make it much easier to find Nemo. <laughs> Incredibly, a quarter of the human brain is used just to control the eyes. Don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage. <laughs> wow, what a cleavage. <laughs> you back in the room. <laughs> and in the UK, 61% of adults are now clinically obese. 
The problem is so bad that the minimum requirement to get on embarrassing bodies now is 25 stone, two fannies and hairy teeth. <laughs> You would make it. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John's team, you ought to go first. What do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Well, one of the things that's affecting my world is all the sadness of all the high street shops closing. So, I think that's probably one of the things. So, Habitat going and Thornton's going and Jane Norman and all these shops. And it's uh, very depressing. It's sad. And I used to work at Habitat. You used to work at Habitat? I used to sell sofas at Habitat. Did you? Not very well, clearly. <laughs> yeah. It's gone downhill because I left. Ah. So, all these shops are closing down and it's very sad, other than the bitch that used to be my manager at Habitat who's now been sacked. Yes. <laughs> Look at me now, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what if she's fat? Sorry? What if she's fat? And then you said, oh, look at me now, you should need to go and help her. <laughs> I think I'm a stylist, not a magician. <laughs> she was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you <laughs> did <laughs> you come on eight out of ten cuts just to slam an unemployed pensioner? <laughs> Good on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, by the way, if you're watching... <laughs> I'm gonna kill your cats. <laughs> what are you doing? What is it? What? Oh, like, Dock haters. Stage. Three clicks. Did you do that one? <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look a little bit special at the best of sure, times. <laughs> Let's get back to the high street. Hello. So the other ones have gone out of business. So Thornton's have gone out of business. Habitat have, have gone, as we said. Comet have gone. Carpet Right have gone. So Carpet Right are actually going to have a closing down sale because they've, they've cried wolf <laughs> <laughs> quite a few times with the we're having a sale. No, really, this is a good sale. But this time, they mean it. Carpet Right's one of those things. You, you, you just can't sell carpet because it's... Well, your brain just can't cope with seeing carpet, like, on the wall and in a book. <laughs> they should have carpet shoes, shouldn't they? So it's like a shoe, put your foot into a piece of carpet and it fits like a shoe. <laughs> then you walk around. <laughs> <laughs> you look down, you go, that's what it would look like, wouldn't it? <laughs> what, what, what do you think about that I idea, think, carpet, I think if... right? Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> Rebranding is the way to go. Like mother is another one that's in trouble. And you just gotta get another market in there. So you put like a, a tap of beer in there and you just call it like MILF Saros. <laughs> Do you do much shopping on the high street? Well, I don't um, shop in Fulton's because I don't eat chocolate. So... <laughs> so, it doesn't matter, so that's gone. <laughs> I mean, it's 140 shops and uh, 20,000 jobs, but, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that one matters as much cos you're not affected. No, no, I used to love Jane Norman. I can't believe that's closing down. Jane Norman, I couldn't get me tits in those clothes, so I'm quite glad it's shutting. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a high street shop, haven't you, Amy? My friend does. It, it, she's on the show, The Only Way is Essex. The Only she, Way is Essex? Yeah. I wanted to mention that, actually. It's not the only way. There's a better way. <laughs> <laughs> but you own a talent salon, don't you? I do the jazzles. Basically, for the show, for the show, I do the jazzles, and they come in and tell me all their life stories. <laughs> why don't you come is down? Why don't you have a vagina? Why don't I come down? Because no, I don't actually... have a vagina. <laughs> Is it called a pejazzle when a boy Jazzle. has it? This is when you put the... Oh, surely you should call it glitter balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, a, I don't do that. What's a pejazzle? <laughs> they take a, a twinkle cave... Twinkle cave? <laughs> ..and they decorate around the top of the twinkle cave with a few little shiny things, Sean. It's delightful. And no. it's called pejazzle. What? No, I don't understand. They decorate it? Yeah. Yes, they do. They sp Why? You, you know, cos sometimes when you look at one, you go, oh, it's a bit dull, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but you see what you can do? You, you can do them at home. I'm sure yours are much better, but you can do it at home where you just put a bit of, like, Pritt stick on. <laughs> 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 a bit of glitter on, but you always have
have to do it over like a bit of newspaper so you can get <laughs> the back into the thing because it's expensive. Could you do it with like, could you use dried pasta and stuff and lentils? As well? <laughs> Have you ever seen any? Have you ever seen? Because you're on the Only Way's Essex. Have you ever seen Geordie Shaw? Mm, I've not watched it yet. Have you not seen it? No, you know I've not Sarah's like it. the big star in it. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's sort of like the equivalent of you. I can't believe I've not watched it yet. It's horrific. Don't watch it. Imagine if someone from Essex and someone from Newcastle mated. <laughs> Make a scouser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see what in the high school is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, this is the news that several high street stores face closure. Clinton Cards is in trouble, so I popped into Hallmark to get them a sorry your closing card. <laughs> sure, Steve, what else do you think is in our top three? Glastonbury. G Glastonbury? Yeah. Right, what Beyonce. have they been saying? Beyonce at Glastonbury, it was all Be over Twitter. What did you see it? Did you like it? No, I didn't go. You didn't go? But everyone was talking about it. It was all over Twitter, everything. Have you ever been to a festival? I've been to V Festival. Was it, yeah, was it good? I, I was supposed to camp for three days, but I lasted a night. So I didn't go to Glastonbury. I no. dream of lasting a night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. Have you ever been to Glastonbury, Sean? Yeah, I stopped going though because I did the maths one year and mathematically <laughs> Glastonbury doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> there's, uh, there's 137,000 people and I think there's 3,200 toilets, which means it's 42 people per toilet. Doesn't sound that bad, but if you think, if you had 42 people staying at your house, one toilet, <laughs> and they're all vegetarians, <laughs> and you're number 38, <laughs> Basically, the Glastonbury is the Somme with Biffy Clyro playing, isn't it? Doc, <laughs> 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 did you go to Glastonbury? Did you watch any of Glastonbury? No, do you know what? The whole festival thing... I mean, number one, I don't like nature. Full stop. I like concrete. <laughs> I like shops. But I went to one festival once, and actually, it was V Festival as well. And I think I lasted about two hours. And then just had to go. I couldn't bear it. I hate it. it was dirty. It was sweaty. Everyone stunk. There was no shops. I couldn't use my credit card. Couldn't use my hair dryer. It was awful. Hated everything. You brought a hair dryer. I took my hair dryer, <laughs> hoping to plug it in somewhere. <laughs> but hated it and just left. Isn't it a farm the rest of the year? So is there like some kind of exchange program? So if your friend, you know, goes to Glastonbury, you have to have a cow at their house. Is that how? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the animals the rest of the time? What happens to the animals? They go on holiday. Oh. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, so a big sort of shed thing with loads of spinning knives. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney went, didn't he, with Colleen? Yeah. Where they went. Do you think I, he knew he was there? Yeah, I don't think he's ever seen a tent before. <laughs> he probably thought they're called shell suit houses. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Wayne? No. Do you like him? I don't watch football. I'm a big fan of Colleen, though. I think she's brilliant. Yeah, she is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, that's unquestionable. That yeah. is. <laughs> Let's just park that as a fact. She is brilliant. The way, the way she manages to walk about and spend money. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of Beyonce. I was more alarmed that it looked like she'd forgotten her skirt. Um, <laughs> it did just look like she had big pants on and then she'd gone out. Like, like you know, when you go to school and you forget your PE kit. She said, do it in her pants instead. Do you think she turned up a glass of and had to do it in her pants? Because yeah. she'd forgotten her kit. <laughs> That's what I think happened. Jay-Z one, well, you're doing it in your kit, we're not going back. <laughs> I went to Fee Festival and I dressed up so much. I had high heels, oh no, I had cowboy boots on. I had like really nice shorts on, but I really dressed up like full face makeup. Everyone was in like wellies and everything. Had you come as a half peeled banana? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about stories this week. I love Beyonce, a breakout artist. I love the way she's fused hip-hop and R&B with a sassy self-assurance that's empowering and self-confident. I love her sense of style and the way she's constantly reinventing her image. I love her music, her lyrics, dedication and single-mindedness. But most of all, I love her ass. <laughs> I 
Uh, Dawson, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it yesterday's strike action? So All the, the uh, teachers are on strike and they didn't know what to do, which seems... Because when the firemen go on strike, they get the army in. You just do that in schools. Teachers can <laughs> send the army into schools. Well, I just hose down the kids. Sorry, there's been a terrible mix <laughs> They certainly sort out the discipline, and they, I imagine they would learn stuff. Two plus two is four. So yes, sir! <laughs> crap out of them. How was your day, Oliver? You don't know, cos you weren't there, man! <laughs> Well, what do you think, Emma? Well, I went to private school, so I never did go... Like, my teacher never went on strike, so... You I went to private school? Yeah. Well, that wasn't a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> when, you say, when you say private school, were you, were you a boarder? Because I think I've seen this DVD. <laughs> Very funny. Do you know what, though? And I got head girl as well. I was head girl. You were head girl? Head girl. <laughs> this is the same... <laughs> It's not just, not just teachers, it's uh, passport control officers as well. They, they want to go on strike. Well, the team, what, what, what they should do is let them go on strike and get the baggage handlers in to do it for them. So you could give them the baggage handlers your passport and they go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that your laptop? <laughs> 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 so this is the strike. So we're not 750,000 people went on strike. Teachers, civil servants, and public sector workers, and the people who answer 999 calls. We should have checked that couldn't happen, shouldn't we? You can't be phoning up and they've just got someone in. She's like, "Ah, hey, yeah, what do you want? ambulance? Brenda, what number for an ambulance is it?" <laughs> <laughs> Two. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I used to take 999 calls. I used to work for BT. But you, you got no offence here, but you are what I would describe as a, a, a chatty Cathy. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what? Chatty what? Chatty Cathy. You, Are you you're quite a, No, you're quite a chatty man. <laughs> so when someone phones up and goes, please fire ambulance, I imagine you would go, what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> He's done what? <laughs> I'll send him round. <laughs> yeah, no, the firemen are busy. They're coming round here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the strikes are up there. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, 750,000 teachers, civil servants and public sector workers didn't go to work yesterday in the largest day of strike action since the 1980s. I feel a bit bad. I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Steen, what else do you think the nation will be talking about this week? Um, Wimbledon. Oh, yeah. Wimbledon? Yeah. yeah. Go on, what, were you excited by it? Do you like it? Not really. Um, <laughs> um, I like that when people watch Wimbledon, they all go out and play tennis, don't they? You know, so it's like when I watch a cookery programme, it makes me want to eat. You know? <laughs> like if I watch a sad programme, it makes me want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> programmes about weddings and that. Just eat. <laughs> Fridge is quite close to the telly, isn't it? <laughs> close enough, unfortunately, <laughs> but I've got one of those grabby things that pensioners have, so it's chubby. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you make of Wimbledon? Do you like Wimbledon? Don't really watch it. But I've got to tell you, I'm actually a professional table tennis player. I'm actually number... Th oh, I was number two in... How Essex. do you serve? Because I think I've seen this in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> so what level are you at table tennis? I'm professional. I'm really good. What, you're a professional? Yeah. Who pays you to play and what do you wear when playing? <laughs> well, I paid when I was about 13 to 16. That's when like, I didn't discover boys or makeup or, you know, the sugar hut. But the, I was really good. The sugar hut? Is yeah. That the euphemism or? <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightclub. I can't believe not been sugar hut. I thought it was a sweet shop when I got quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think of women's Do you like it, go? Do you know what, I don't really watch... I, I kind of do watch it. It's one of those sports that, I, I, if it's on, I watch a little bit, but I don't really follow it unless it's uh, raining and the boys are wearing very small white shorts. <laughs> uh, Cut. goes very sick. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, Lopez is fit, you get it. So. Good to know, if you're watching Lopez. <laughs> this, is, this is like hearing what Sue Barker wants to say. <laughs> <laughs> How many years are we going to have a roof before it's not exciting? Whereas it just literally is. Is the roof on? Yeah. What I don't understand is why can't they play tennis in the rain? Just get on with it. The ball's wet, they slip around, it's funnier. <laughs> why can't they play in the rain? So you cricket. can play in a bit of light rain, it's fine. Yeah, but why can't they play in heavy rain? 
Why do they just play on if it's pissing down? Ah, it's all the <laughs> <laughs> Just play the bloody game, get on with it. You can make racket umbrellas. That's what they say. <laughs> 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 Well, let's have a look and see whether Wimbledon is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, indeed, the most talked about thing this week. Us British, we're not great at tennis, so holding the best tennis competition in the world here in Britain is ridiculous. It's like, I don't know, hosting the World Cup in Qatar. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Sarah and Amy have one point. John, Gock and Sean have two points. Out of ten cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Okay, Sean Steen, what do you like the look of? Uh, keyboard. We like the look of the keyboard, Jimmy. That's you like the look of the keyboard. Consensus okay. amongst me and the girls. <laughs> <laughs> In a poll to find out who people would turn to for advice, Google, the internet search engine, came second. What came first? Um, don't know. It's not written there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really had any great advice. I mean, a couple of good bits of advice from my dad. He said, never drink in a pub with a flat roof. <laughs> Good advice, you think about it. They're usually on the edges of council estates. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> You're more likely to get punched in a pub with a flat roof, aren't you? There's a higher chance of you getting hit. There's a pretty good chance of me being hit in any given pub. <laughs> I think if you walk in like that, and my father warned me against this, but <laughs> I shall have a Cinzano and lemonade and give you a chance. <laughs> Who, who do you go to for advice? When something bad happens, when, when something happens in your life, there's a crisis, who do you go to? My mum. And what does she say? Google it. <laughs> I think it's got to be family, because I, I would definitely go to Mama and Papa Wan every single time for advice. Mama and Papa? Mama and Papa Wan. Oh, that sounds adorable. I think, yeah, they are adorable. Do you phone them up for just advice on, on like personal stuff, or is well, it like? Is I, it I, tend, I tend to talk to Mum and Wan first because I can't understand my dad because he talks in very broken English still, which is uh, a little bit racist, cock. A little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, uh, it's a little bit, but it's true. But honestly, to this day, you never communicated with your dad. <laughs> but do you, my dad, my dad is one of these immigrants. So if it came over to the country. We. we <laughs> Social immunity, I'm allowed to say this. He's one of these immigrants that came over, and we came over, he couldn't speak English, and my mum taught him to speak English because they fell in love. And then over his, his life, he's lived here since he was 16, he's about 102 now. So he's been here most of his life. And so he must be able to talk good English. But he's really, as soon as he doesn't want to listen to a word we're saying, we'll say, you know, Dad, how are you? We'll just go, oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn around to my dad and I'll say, that, you know, dad, this has happened in my life, or, you know, this has happened, I really need some advice, and he'll go, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is, and this is the honest truth, he becomes really racist about himself and refuses to talk in English. And you've got okay. comedians watching you on going, you know we can't possibly join in on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, does he sometimes say this? <laughs> He's amazing. I love my dad. So you would go to your parents for advice? I always go to my parents for advice. I'm going to give it to you, because the answer is the person a Brits turn to most for advice is a parent. Well done. <laughs> so people are more likely to go to a parent for advice than ask Google. I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be with shouting, Mum, Mum, have you got any topless shots of Megan Fox? <laughs> yeah. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Top thing that makes someone posh. How they speak, you think that's what makes someone posh? 100%. I think, I think it's more that you can always, nearly, with a real posh person, you can always see their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I think a really, a really posh person looks like a normal person halfway through a sneeze, like... <gasps> <laughs> posh people always have uh, their pasta. Kept in like see through jars. They want to show you their past. They go, look, 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 look spaghetti. Look, 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 what have you done? You've taken it out of the packet and put it in another packet. You're wasting your time. <laughs> like it's a special treasure. Yeah. 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 Sarah, what do, you, what do you genuinely, what do you think makes someone posh? Um, 
men wear coloured trousers. Yeah. What's that about? Yeah, not just like beige or black or jeans. That's like the, red, the, yeah, and green, yeah. green. Yeah, Who's wearing green trousers? trousers? And also, posh people, they don't know how to put on a jumper, do they? <laughs> They get a jumper and they go, oh, bloody... Oh, I'll just put it over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, posh people say they don't do their hair, do they, really? What? I noticed that. Posh people don't do their hair? No, not really. It's all messy and, like, skew with, isn't it? What about Lord Walsh oh, over there? <laughs> <laughs> Order! <laughs> The question is something that makes someone posh. The swimming pool's bigger than the gene pool. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the poshest person you've met? Who's the who's the poshest? You. <laughs> not that posh. I, I come across, I think, as, as a little bit posh, but I'm not. That's posh. <laughs> I'm not actually that posh. I'm just a fucking slough. I can't be that posh. I've just got very good diction. I'd stab you as soon as fucking look at you. <laughs> OK, so top thing that makes someone posh, it's to do with your childhood. Public school. That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, the top thing that makes someone posh is going to private school. I went to a fairly posh single-sex school, but I never really fitted in. I guess partly it's because I'm male and partly because I was 37 when they found me. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Sarah and Amy have two points. John Gock and Sean have three points, which means John's team are tonight's winners. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Wednesday. That's it from us. Good night. It's a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 51% of kids think the world will be a better place in 10 years? And they're right. It'll be great, especially if you're a big fan of nuclear fallout and fighting for petrol with a spear made out of a human thigh bone. <laughs> the average couple argues 312 times a year. It's actually 310 times, but try telling her that. <laughs> 90% of Taiwan's teenagers feel anxious when they can't use their mobile phones. Boo-hoo. Taiwan's Minister of Technology is looking into it. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. Obviously, the biggest story of the year is the news of the world, phone hacking. So tonight, we're looking for the other biggest stories of the last 12 months. Sean Seam, what do you think of the other biggest stories of the year? Ladies, take it away. It's got to be the royal wedding, hasn't it? Yeah, the royal, the royal wedding. wedding, yes. Yeah. Oh, God, the ro oh, what a magical oh. day that was. I <laughs> <laughs> just stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so... She was so beautiful. <laughs> was it the dress? I came out the thing. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing a dress. Oh, no. It was a lovely day cos uh, the M6 was really quiet. <laughs> I just took advantage of the quiet roads. <laughs> Did neither of you watch it? I watched it, yeah. yeah. In the nude. <laughs> <laughs> it's my little protest. 
It was one of the most boring things I've ever watched on TV. Oh, come on. It was? What Why? do you mean? No, come on. My girlfriend made, uh, made me watch it. The whole family came around and I okay, was okay. bored shitless. <laughs> Anybody here seriously watch? I don't. I just don't get it. I just. I, I watch. Simply I watch don't it in, get it. We we uh, we celebrated in quite a big way in my house. We got a, uh, a McDonald's breakfast, <laughs> and we watched it in bed. It was pretty good. Did you get the McDonald's delivered to your bed. <laughs> you reached those dizzy heights. <laughs> I got a butler. Uh, <laughs> no, my poor long-suffering girlfriend went to McDonald's. And got coffee. Your and... girlfriend went to McDonald's. Yeah, we thought we'd celebrate in style. We thought we'd watch the the royal wedding the way it's meant to be enjoyed. Mm. Basically, at, at she making... said, "You're watching this with me," and you said, "Only if you get me McDonald's." Is yeah. that right? <laughs> <laughs> It was one of those things where I, not only did I hate that it was happening, but I hated that people were enjoying it. <laughs> I hated seeing happy people buying crap and thinking... They waved a flag for two hours and then they binned it. 140 tonnes of crap. <laughs> that no one knows where it went. I reckon Nick Griffin just went round in a transit, just grabbing all... <laughs> He's just at home robbing Union Jacks on himself now. <laughs> Lossing with bunting like that. Uh, <laughs> Are you a romantic, Kate? Did, did you enjoy I, it? Well, I think so. I mean, it was the first time in, what, 350 years that someone outside royalty or aristocracy had married into our royal family. I think they genuinely looked Well, let's face it, the, and, yeah, the gene and... pool could use a little chlorine at that stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's Pippa, really, that the focus is on. Well, the yeah. Pippa, the Pippa, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Pippa has a bum. <laughs> Outshone by your sister on your wedding days, being outshone by your sister's ass. That's just <laughs> so much more upsetting. Not the rest of it, just her ass. But well, that was the best <laughs> thing about it. Well, the rest of it was just because I, I don't understand the rest of it. It's better than getting excited about whether he's going to kiss her a second time. Hang on, is he going to kiss her? A he's going to go for it. Is he? Is he? Are we going to get the commentator was going? Are we going to get two kisses? Are we going to get? Of course you were, because the crowd was shouting, "Kiss her! Kiss her!" <laughs> he was just under pressure. Well, he was bullied into it. If they'd been shouting, "Whip her dress up and show us her chimney," he'd have done it. <laughs> Now, Greg, you got married recently, right? Yeah, my, my lovely wife, Heidi. How did you, how did you meet your, uh, your wife? On Twitter. Were you following her, or...? Uh, she was following me. Like um... a lazy stalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you chat to your followers, and then uh, this, this girl was, uh, was clever, obviously clever, and she was funny, and I looked at her picture and I thought, fuck. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's not an opera. That is. <laughs> 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 I looked at her. Fuck. Hell. <laughs> Did you sell it to Hello or OK or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Go yeah. On. Hello. Yeah, and the honeymoon. <laughs> if, as soon as you get Hello involved, everyone seems to want to discount your wedding and your honeymoon by a serious percentage. So. It seems silly not to. And if you ever want to remember your wedding, just go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> win win, it's a win win. <laughs> oh, I've got to get a root canal, but oh, what a lovely day we had. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Kate, did you get married as well recently? Yeah. I got married in December. And, and now you're knocked up. Oh. I know. He, he works fast. Yeah. Does he? Well, never mind. <laughs> How did you meet? Um, well. I was, I was going off to Iraq and you have to do a course called a hostile environments course. And generally you get kidnapped, hood over your head, tied up, beaten up a little bit. And then you, you, he did that to you and then you went, do, should we go for a... <laughs> <laughs> and then he took me off into the... Yeah, no. And then... <laughs> you have to negotiate yourself out of the situation. I'm just digging myself to... into a really big hole. <laughs> you had to negotiate yourself out of the situation? Yeah. What did you offer? <laughs> Money wow. I've wasted on Jamie's Italians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if the raw wedding is one of the most talked about mm. things in the last 12 months. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> the royal wedding was an amazing moment. If you're wondering how William wooed Kate Middleton, he did have the best chat up line of all time. Nice face, love. Look better on a stamp. <laughs> uh, Sarah Ferguson has revealed that Prince Andrew carried a photo of her to the royal wedding as did all the security men. <laughs> John Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about? Well, last 12, I'd say one of the biggest stories of my lifetime, uh, as it was reported in the mail, pensioner attacked in his own home by foreigners as his wife and son watched, as we reported it, Bin Laden, shocked. Uh, <laughs>
identify him by after he was like they shot him first. Like, always the best way. Always the best way. <laughs> shot him first, and then they identified him, didn't they? Yes. But they didn't know. They didn't. They didn't have any really like accurate way of identifying him. But they knew he was six foot four. So they got one of the army seal, the navy seal boys, the Americans, was about that height. So they got him to lie next to the corpse. <laughs> this is what they did. That's how they reckoned. True, it, yeah. You know. Yeah. And then mm. they knew he didn't like butter, so they had a buttercup under his chin. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's un when you read it, it's unbelievable. It's the, they lay somebody down next to you. What's that? Oh, shit, we've shot Ronnie Corbett. It's the wrong thing. <laughs> I don't think it's right to go in and kill somebody without trial. I'm slightly disturbed by it, you know. I mean, I moved out of Peckham for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, do you think he should have been killed? I don't think he should have been shot for a couple of reasons, but I think it's a shame, really, I mean, for all his kids, cos he'll never get the chance to see them blow themselves up. <laughs> moment for any religious maniac and uh, that's been taken from him. I think that's the same. Also, I think they should have kidnapped him and then made him play a, a, a gay cheerleader in Glee. <laughs> Wear a pink tracksuit with Juicy across the arse. <laughs> I think that would have sent a stronger message. <laughs> uh, let's have a look and see whether Osama Bin Laden is one of the most talked about things in the last 12 months. <laughs> yes, it is, number two. Osama is regarded by many as a hero, particularly within the hide-and-seek community. <laughs> <laughs> One thing still to get. Fingers on buzzers. Charlie Sheen! Crazy Charlie Sheen! Oh. He was all over YouTube and the press for his uh, amazing rants. Winning! <laughs> he kept on saying that was his catchphrase, yeah. Winning! Yeah. Loser. Yeah. <laughs> and so let's have a look at Charlie Sheen in action. All these radio rants have people thinking Charlie Sheen has got to be on drugs again. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it's not available because if you try it once, you will die. Your face will melt off and your children will weep over your exploded body. Um, too much. Is that <laughs> saying that you're bipolar? Wow. What does that mean? I guess that... You know, you're on two ends of the spectrum. Wow. And then what? What's the cure? Medicine? Make me like them? Not gonna happen. I'm by winning. <laughs> there was a theory that he was putting it on for just publicity, just to mess around, just to get out of his contract. What do you think? If he was putting it on, then Charlie Sheen is the greatest actor of yes. our time. Yeah. And having watched Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen is not the greatest actor of our time. <laughs> He's sleeping with prostitutes and, like, uh, porn, stars. porn stars who have their, his name tattooed on their feet. <laughs> yeah, but... It's a bit cool. I think, I think, of course it is. The, the whole guy, he's, he's living with two porn stars, I think, sounds great, but the reality, I think, is bloody awful. Like, they come home from work and he goes, do you have a nice day? And they come in and they're going... Oh! <laughs> 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 Trixie didn't come in, had to do overtime. <laughs> oh, what a bloody day! He was earning $45 million a year, and he still had to go to the studio and ask to borrow $10 million more. No, he might have just not had any cash that day. <laughs> you know, like, lend us a 20 quid or... So I need 10 million? Yeah. yeah. If you went to the <laughs> it's bank... Just, it's all relative, isn't it? If you went to the it's bank and said, I need a loan, and they said, what do you earn, and you went 45 million, they would probably question where you'd spent all that. No, you'd get it, because you could obviously prove you could pay it back. Yeah, when you're Jimmy? tired and you're going, I'll pay it back from the space monkeys who come down. <laughs> <laughs> Inject the cash into my dreams and I shit it into your <laughs> bank account. Surprisingly, that's not one of our top three biggest stories. OK, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about this last year? Is it uh, Chilean miners? Oh, the Chilean miners. The, the, Tell me about the Chilean miners. Do you like the Chilean miners? Lost their, well, you can't not like them, really, can you? What sort of sour, miserable bars <laughs> would you be? <laughs> well, they ate those 33 miners who survived <laughs> that tragedy. <laughs> yeah, she liked them. Is there one who'd been with his partner for 25 years and when he came out, he proposed to her? Do you think she engineered the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> Women really like a proposal. <laughs> What's yeah. it gonna take? <laughs> yeah. I bet the honeymoon period didn't last long. It was like, oh, so wonderful, you're back. Within about a week, they're going, I wish, sometimes I wish you were still down that fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you know when they were, they were running out of food and they, had, they were, like, eating two spoonfuls of tuna? 
every two days or something, half a biscuit and half a glass of milk. That's yes. what they were having. Then when they, they, went, they were down to two tins of tuna, and they all got together at that point and they prayed to have double the amount of tuna they had. If you ask, why would you just pray, if you had two tins of tuna between 33 people, if you were praying, why not go for a little bit more than four tins of tuna? <laughs> it's a bit like, you know when Teddy Waite was chained to that radiator for four years? It's a bit like him praying and asking God to turn the thermostat down. <laughs> <laughs> why, didn't they ask for, why didn't they ask for six tins or a tin each? Or something? Maybe they didn't really like tuna that much. <laughs> Apparently they didn't talk about cannibalism, but you thought, it's not surprising when they're all emaciated and just covered in soot, is it? <laughs> you sent Greg down, I'll covered in parsley with a chocolate <laughs> orange in his mouth. <laughs> They've been on him like piranhas in a Bond film, just a bit of... Just a bit of glasses left after five minutes. <laughs> I can't understand, once they found them, why it took so long to get them out? Sorry, what? They were down a mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they were down a mine? Yeah, but they found them. They had television them. pictures of them, and it still took three months to get them out. They were getting food down, TV cameras down, pool tables, jukeboxes, and that they couldn't get one. <laughs> they couldn't get one single one of them up. <laughs> you know what? I thought you were crazy, but you make a very interesting. <laughs> <point>. <laughs> I think that what they should have done, they should have played a trick on them. Like the first one to come up, everyone should have been dressed in alien monkey costume. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out, he goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Pot and a ladder going up to it. <laughs> There's 33 left and we're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was weird that uh, the last guy to come up, I felt sorry for him because he was the last one to come up. The, the Chilean president grabbed him and said, Would you like to join me in singing the Chilean national anthem? And it was, it's really long. It went on for about 15 minutes, like, Chile, Felicidad, Le Montagne, all the color of the sheesh, and all this. And I was thinking, that was, that's not the song they should have sang. They should have sang the theme tune to Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> who is the man who'd risk his neck for his brother, man? Shaft! Can you dig it? <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the chilli miners are one of the most talked about things. <laughs> The Chilean miners emerged last October after 69 days in the mine. The miners went to visit Manchester United after they were rescued. And if anyone knows what it's like to be buried deep in a dangerous hole for months on end, it's Ryan Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Sarah and Kate have two points. John, Greg and Rod have one. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. OK, John's team, what are you going to go for? What do you like the look of? Well, we've only got one choice, really, haven't we? I think... We'll pick the person that is sat next to me. Go on, then. We asked the studio audience, would you complain if you were served a terrible meal, yes or no? What do you think this audience said? I never have. And Zeppu said yes. No, <laughs> don't, do not do that. <laughs> do not help him. I... Uh, I did, hand look, up. Of, course he, of course he put his hand up. God love him, he's happy just to be indoors. <laughs> I don't believe uh, people say that they would complain. I don't think people oh. do complain over here in, in Great Britain. I think we're far too polite, uh, especially oh in restaurants. Oh, You're really? not. Well, I'm very polite. Sorry, have you not seen your show? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say, on that show, we only ever critique someone's food, not, not their personality. It'd be better tell you, though, if you went, oh, that's amazing, but you're such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst thing you've had on MasterChef? What's the worst? I think we had a fella who uh, happily roasted a quail beautifully and for reasons best known to himself, stuck it on top of a chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I just... I'm not even looking, but I presume Sarah's mouth is watering. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's going, finally, I can enjoy chicken. <laughs> it's like Nando's and Thornton's. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Sean, have you ever complained in a restaurant? I always complain. But at what point do you complain? Because you can complain and then you worry about what's going to happen to your food when it comes back. Yeah, you can. I, I complain, but I never eat what they bring back unless my complaint is, this hasn't got enough spit in it. <laughs> Something's not right. I don't see why. It's a real... That's why, that's why service is shit in this country and that's why food is shit in this country. Ooh. It's getting better. Ooh. But generally, if you go to a service station in, in France or in Italy or Spain, sure. I just don't say the, the, the level of food that everyone can experience, you can have great food. You go to a service station in this country, the food 
It's, it's virtually... It's like being in a lab or some horrible experiment. <laughs> with sausages and jiff or something. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I agree with you that food at the basic level, when you really want it, when you're starving, is rubbish. Whose rule is it that we had to put sandwiches in a fridge? Yes, yeah, You yeah. know, they don't have sandwiches in a fridge in Spain and they're not all dying of warm sandwich disease. <laughs> and who, more importantly, who's the person, when they're making the sandwiches, pushes all the cheese to the front? <laughs> <laughs> and you look at it, it's like, you know, it's like, imagine if you're trying to fall in love in Iran, you've only got the eyes to go on. <laughs> <laughs> You think there's loads of cheese in there, and then you open the sandwich, and there's just like a little cheese hill going down to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I once bought um, I once bought a baked potato in a like a big food hall in Australia, and uh... you travel for lunch, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was in Australia, and I bought uh, I can't remember where, and I bought uh, a baked potato in one of those polystyrene things. I opened it up, and as I was it, there was a, a piece of shelving bracket. <laughs> Yes, shelving bracket. I swear to God, in the baked potato, and I took it back to the bloke, and he goes, "Ah, oh, you know, that's nothing to do with me, mate." And I put it behind him, and there was literally a shelf like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so we asked you, student, would you complain if they were served a terrible meal? What do you think? Yes or no? I wouldn't. I would just never go back there again. So I don't think people would. So you think they wouldn't complain? Yeah. Sean, what I do you think? think? Yes. Clue is in the word terrible. If it's a terrible movie, yes, you would complain. Yes, I think they would complain. You yes. think they would? Okay, I can tell you the answer is yes. 79% of the studio audience would complain if they got a terrible meal. <laughs> I tried to raise a living. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your question Best thing about living alone? John. What, mate? I'm never alone. <laughs> Never alone, am I, John? No, you're not, John. You're always with people, John, yeah. <laughs> John and John are gonna have a good chat about you when John gets home. <laughs> I'm seriously learning to deal with spiders. <laughs> That's it. There's no-one else to do it. I generally, I'm a shrieker, but living on my own, I thought... Cos used to, if there was a spider, I would just move to the next room. And then, once you've used all the rooms, you've got, right, we've got to learn how to deal with this. <laughs> so spiders following you from room to room? Surely you can just go, keep going round. No, there's loads of them. <laughs> Taunting him. <laughs> oh, so hang on, so one spider stays in the lounge, he's got that covered, and then you go into the bedroom, you're out there for a few months, and you go, hang on, he's gone in the bedroom, we'll send another one in there, but you stay in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> They're like a SWAT team, clearing terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Clear! <laughs> <laughs> Clear! <laughs> what do you think the best thing about living on your own? Ross? The freedom to pleasure yourself to something weird like songs of praise and... <laughs> And if you, if you live with somebody, then... If you, let's say you died in the act. Then, if you live with somebody, they'll find you straight away and that'll be embarrassing forever for your memory. And uh, if you live on your own, then by the time they find you years later, your rotted corpse or whatever, you'll... You know, songs of praise will have finished and... <laughs> they'll just find a pile of innocent dust next to a box of tissues and a single white glove. <laughs> and you will look like a snooker ref who died of a cold. <laughs> in my pants a lot and um and i live in a block of flats and opposite me is another block of flats and <laughs> the flat opposite mine's been empty the whole time so i just wander around i don't got curtains i just wander around in my pants but then a friend of mine came around and she spotted that uh, like some young lads had just moved in and she said oh maybe you should get yourself some curtains <laughs> and so as far as i'm concerned if some young lads are looking at me wandering around in my neck guys i'm still the winner aren't i really <laughs> i just wonder how long it's going to take them to get some curtains off <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time since I lived on my own. What I miss, uh, I like about living on my own, is all the songs I used to make up. <laughs> Get a put the kettle on and make a cappuccino. <laughs> make myself a cup of tea with sugar. <laughs> Hot tea for sure. Shall we have a biscuit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those songs. I don't have the creativity to make my own. I used to steal existing. I got like coffee time. Can't drink this. Why not? It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a hit on our hands. <laughs> what do you think the best thing about living on your own? Is it the remote? Control um, of the remote. Oh, yeah, that is it. the right answer. I'll give you that. Uh, well That's done. close enough. Yeah. yeah.
Well, that sound tells me that it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Greg and Rod have two points. Sean, Sarah and Kate have one with four. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Wednesday. That's it from us. Good night. Ten Cats, Jack D, Jedward, Amy Childs, Bear Grylls, Alex Reed, Jamelia, David O'Doherty, Russell Kane, Krishnan Guru Murphy, Joe Wilkinson, and their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, Doc Wan, Kelly Osborne, Sarah Milliken, Lorraine Kelly, Jack Whitehall, Mickey Flanagan, Charlie Brooker, Patsy Palmer, and their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cat, to show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, one in five Brits has sent a racy text message to the wrong person? I once wrote an explicit text to my girlfriend's mum, but somehow I sent it to my girlfriend by mistake. 20% <laughs> of Americans think the sun orbits the Earth. Sounds bad until you realise the other 80% think it's towed across the sky by Jesus in a chariot. <laughs> 33% of Brits keep a weapon in their home. I keep mine in my trousers. <laughs> right, ladies? It's a standing knife. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Alex, Russell, what have the nation been talking about this week? It's got to be... Giggsy. Giggsy? He's been a bit of a naughty boy, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, a bit of a naughty boy, I think it's probably an understatement. Yeah. What is interesting about the footballers, though, is they seem to pick up all their women via mobile phones. They either, like, send pictures or texts. They say, do you want to go out and have sex? And they go, yeah, all right, and that's it. There's no... <laughs> what did they do? How did footballers get off with women before mobile phones? Pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a picture of their cock on a bank statement. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bank statement, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> I can't draw, so I've got Rio to do it. <laughs> I just thought something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, it's quite normal. Is it, it's quite... <laughs> Is it Lego? <laughs> First is that image in business. Incidentally, she came to my New Year's Eve party and, um... Imogen came to your New Year's Eve party? She did, uh, Well, but now she's famous, so things are gonna she's change. Done, she's <laughs> done... She's done... She's done... She's now in a different league. Yeah. <laughs> you know you have to sign all these NDAs and these, uh, what's the, the thing they're going... Non-disclosure agreements? Yeah, everyone had to sign these. To come to your party? Correct, yes. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that wasn't my suggestion. Because the Somebody girl, else's suggestion. I remember, the, you remember that girl, I forget her name, that you were dating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember yeah. the only reason you're famous, that girl? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I should have booked security. I might be tired. I mean, all right. <laughs> Don't cry, Alex. Jesus. <laughs> the other ladies, is it alleged? Are we allowed to talk about the other? Oh, we are allowed to talk the, 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 the other lady. The sister-in-law. I mean, oh, my good. Brothers, what's that all yeah. about? <laughs> no. It's when a woman has yeah. two babies and they're both boys. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So not only has Ryan Giggs been in someone who's been in Big Brother, but his brother has also been in someone his Big Brother has been in. <laughs> John, Sarah, Patsy, what have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> it's the end of the news of the world. They're closing the news of the world just in case the allegations are true. Which is a bit of a clue that they might be. It's a bit like saying, I can't be sure my flatmate was lying when he said he didn't drink the last of the milk, but I have had him killed anyway. The thing is, it's got to a point now where paedophiles watching this scandal unfold can take the moral high ground. <laughs> was wrong, <laughs> but I didn't phone up dead soldiers' parents. You know, it, it, that's how bad it is, and I think that they, they had no choice but to get rid of the news of the world. It, 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 no choice but to, for it to go. But what's odd is that none of the editors are being, are being sacrificed. And it's a bit weird, these editors who said, I, don't, I didn't know anything about this. It's a bit like a butcher holding up a leg of lamb and going, what, they killed a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Krishnan and Joe, what right. else have the nation been talking about? The Greek economy, mm. the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the bailout, the riots in Greece. They've been rioting about the uh, austerity measures that are being imposed. And uh, they've been they couldn't control the rioters. I thought they'd have used the hummus cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Just spray them with hummus. <laughs> and in the sun, it'd dry quickly and they'd be stuck like that. <laughs> Take a very light-hearted approach to that uh, <laughs> serious problem they've got in, in Greece. Krishnan, you're, you're, you're like a proper grown-up newsreader. Tell us what's going on in Greece. They're screwed, basically. I mean, they're... Um... <laughs> uh, Which was straight. Don't, don't sugarcoat it for yeah. us. Yeah, they, they've got massive debts that they can't service, and uh, they need another bailout. How much do they owe? Total debts are 355 billion euros. 355 billion? Yeah. There's got to be a point where you start opening your statements. <laughs> 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 The real tragedy of the whole thing is being this much in debt. We'll never see a Greek man on the moon. I think that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was dreamt of. <laughs> First Greek on the moon. <laughs> They'll never have enough money to pay for that space program now. Economy is a Greek word as well, sadly. Yeah. Short for he got no bloody money. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go this week? I went to Eastbourne. How did you cope with the screaming? Screaming where? In Eastbourne? At the tennis when they hit the it and they... Screaming? The grunting. They're trying to ban it, aren't they? They're trying to ban the noises. Yeah, they are. I have to watch it with the sound down. I can't be doing with it. If you turn the sound down and do your own noises, like, boink, boink. <laughs> I imagine that the ball boys are little gremlins, and then when they come out to get a ball, I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Can I hear the Kremlin noise again? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I go, my ball, my ball, my ball! <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone think Andy Murray's going to win? Of course he's not going to win. We always <laughs> go through this shit every year. He's never going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Read the news like that. <laughs> oh, she's bollocks. <laughs> Not reading that. Move on. <laughs> well, it'd be good. It'd be, it'd be a breath of fresh air if the news was read like this. I'd love yeah. that. Afghanistan, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that did annoy me was that um, Andy Murray takes his top off a lot. And, like, he's obviously proud of his body, isn't he? Which annoys me. If he had my body, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> so if he had your body, yeah. I don't know whether we'd be playing there. Well... <laughs> I th always think he looks a mess because, like, Nadal is incredible. Like, he's just a physical Adonis. And Annie Murray looks like a heroin addict that shoplifted a JD Sports. <laughs> <laughs> he's pathetic. <laughs> and, like, when you see him next to Nadal, Nadal is just the perfect man because he's really strong. He's got these big pistons of arms. But then a really nice little boyish face, sort of very hamsterish features. Like, imagine if you were with Nadal, he'd be like two hours of like rampant, ferocious sex. And then afterwards, just make you eggs Benedict. <laughs> Does anyone... Do you fancy a game of who's got a crush on Nadal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I've won. <laughs> John, 
What are the biggest scandals? Is it WikiLeaks? That's where the whole world was blown apart by a series of increasingly tedious revelations. <laughs> in, the, in the East End, we've got a slightly dirt, different version of the website. It's called Dirty Filthy Graph. <laughs> Slag, in brackets. So you, th you see Julian Assange as a... Uh... Dirty Filthy Grass. Slag. <laughs> <laughs> The minute they buried the Quay twins, I knew all this would start. They kept a lid on all this. Everyone behaved themselves. Mm. Ronnie goes, bosh, it's all out in the yard. <laughs> sort of disappointing revolutionary, isn't he, though, Julian Assange? He's a sort of sleazy Australian in a, in a, in a, in a cotton suit that looks like it smells of urine. <laughs> WikiLeaks is actually what happens when Australians don't work behind bars. <laughs> There's one thing I'd like to say about the name. It's a strange name, Assange. It sounds mm. like, like a, a tactic in croquet. Mm. Isn't it? <laughs> if you knock your ball there, you have Assange. <laughs> <your ball. laughs> or like a parade ground drill, like, Legionnaires, Assange! <laughs> And they all go into the shape of a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what else does it sound like, Sean? <laughs> the surgeon would say, well, we've removed the prostate, now we just have to assange the wound. <laughs> They're like a part of France. We've bought a lovely place in the assange. <laughs> what else does it sound like, though, Sean? <laughs> assange. Mm. It sounds like that rash you get, right? <laughs> The rash you can get if you wax your chest too quickly. If you're a footballer. And he's got a very, he's got a lot of Assange there, the skin is. <laughs> I've got Olympic tickets to see Assange. <laughs> what are you wearing? Is it Assange? <laughs> well, when the meat is nearly ready, you just have to Assange the vegetables. <laughs> Talking about this week. Um, Kate and well, I don't know why they are, but apparently Kate and Wills have uh, been in the news because they went to Canada. They're praising them for doing more than that. Oh, it's amazing how Kate she just went up to this girl and talked to her <laughs> as if she was like another human being that spoke the same language. It's you, amazing. You can't talk to girls, John. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we put the two girls on your team. We thought we'd give you a chance. We've paid women to talk to you. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> you own a tanning salon, don't you? I do vajazzles. Basically, for the show, for the show, I do vajazzles, and they come in and tell me all their life stories. <laughs> why don't you come Is down? Why don't you have a vajazzle? Why don't I come down? Because no, I don't actually... have a vagina. <laughs> Is it called a pejazzle when a boy Jazzle. has it? This is when you put the... Oh, well, surely you should call it glitter balls. <laughs> well, I, don't, the, I don't do that. What's a pejazzle? Is they take a, a twinkle cave... A twinkle cave. <laughs> and they decorate around the top of the twinkle cave with a few little shiny things, Sean. It's delightful. No. And it's called pejazzle. What? No, I don't understand. They decorate it? Yeah. Yes, they do. They Why? You, you know, cos sometimes when you look at one, you go, oh, it's a bit dull, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you see what you can do? You, you can do them at home. I'm sure yours are much better, but you can do it at home where you just put a bit of, uh, like, Pritt stick on. <laughs> a bit of glitter on, but you always have to do it over, like, a bit of newspaper so you can just... <laughs> just to back into the thing, because it's expensive. Could you do it with, like, could you use dried pasta and stuff and lentils? <laughs> <laughs> Teachers are on strike and they didn't know what to do, which seems because when the firemen go on strike, they get the army in. You just do that in schools. Teachers <laughs> go on send the army into schools. Or just hose down the kids. Sorry, there's been a terrible mix up. They <laughs> certainly sort out the discipline and they, I imagine they would learn stuff. Two plus two is four. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> the crap out of them. How was your day, Oliver? You don't know because you weren't there, man. <laughs> oh,
Oh, yes, yeah, they've done that again. The they? government, government of there have been two government U turns this week. There's the obvious U turn over sentencing policy. Because Ken Clark said we're going to halve sentences if you say you did it. Yeah. Mm. Which sounds like a reasonable offer. It's almost worth saying you did something. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ken Clark's been dubbed by the, the Sun. They call him the paedophile's friend, which sounds like <laughs> the strongest mint in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. You take your suck one, it clears your hard drive. <laughs> okay, as you guys know, okay, we met Barack Obama, okay, and he was what? like, <laughs> You're joking! His <laughs> hand shook Barack Obama's hand. Yeah, why? like, anyone wants to touch that? you, can. Just, 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 just Davis, why, why did you meet him? We met the biggest under... world leader in the world, okay, and he was like, So what is Jedward? And we told him that it's John and Ed, and you put together, and it makes Jedward. <laughs> <laughs> But why, was he lost or something? How did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rack of armor opened the wrong door and get lost. <laughs> and go, What's going on there? And he switched the light on, and you two are there. <laughs> How did it happen? You told him the Jedward story, and he didn't go back to America and say, from now on, I am Obama. <laughs> <laughs> All the biggest people in Ireland were there. Daniel Day-Lewis was there, Gabriel Byrne was there, we were there. He skipped everyone, walked straight to us, and Michelle Obama was there also. Bono wasn't there. Yeah, he was too cool. He was on tour. Bono was probably in your dressing room going... <laughs> <laughs> can I ask a question? Of course you can. <laughs> Surprised to find that my memory is not wiped out by that. Yours maybe. <laughs> do they not hit kids in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Eight Out of Ten Cats. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. Okay, Sean Steen, what do you like the look of? We like the look of the keyboard, Jimmy. In a poll to find out who people would turn to for advice, Google, the internet search engine, came second. What came first? When, when something happens in your life, there's a crisis, who do you go to? My mum. And what does she say? Google it. <laughs> I think it's got to be family, because I, I would definitely go to Mama and Papa Wan every single time for advice. Mama and Papa? Mama and Papa Wan. Oh, that sounds adorable. I think, yeah, they are adorable. Do you phone them up for just advice on, on like, personal stuff, or is well, it like... Is I, it I, tend, I tend to talk to Mum and Wan first, cos I can't understand my dad, cos he talks in very broken English still, which is... Uh, a little bit racist, Gok. A little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, uh, it's a little bit, but it's true, but honestly, to this day... Have you never communicated with your dad? <laughs> we do. My dad, my dad is one of these immigrants. It came over to the country. We, we... <laughs> Social immunity, I'm allowed to say this. He's one of these immigrants that came over, and we came over, he couldn't speak English, and my mum taught him to speak English because they fell in love. And then over his, his life, he's lived here since he was 16, he's about 102 now. So he's been here most of his life. And so he must be able to talk good English. But he's really, as soon as he doesn't want to listen to a word we're saying, we'll say, you know, Dad, how are you? We'll just go, oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Turn around to my dad and I'll say, no, you know, dad, this has happened in my life, or you know, this has happened. I really need some advice. And he'll go, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is, and this is the honest truth. He becomes really racist about himself and refuses to talk in English. <laughs> Sean Steen, what do you think kids are most scared of? Well, in our house, it's Mr. Jangles, <laughs> which is one of the characters I play. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who is Mr. Jangles, Sean? <laughs> Mr. Jangles comes up the stairs! <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in bed! <laughs> Sean, Before Mr. Jangles gets up there! <laughs> that's everybody's scared, Sean. That's just... <laughs> we're, we're I'm all getting a bit panicky. Now. I'm afraid that's the end of the show because we have to go to bed now. <laughs> I find it really funny when kids are scared of stuff because my girls, they're not, I've got two daughters and they're not scared of anything, but I've got a niece and she's scared of everything. I took her to Cadbury World recently and like they've got these big like cocoa beans walking around, so like dressed up cocoa beans and the whole time she was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I was just 
just I'm not surprised. Laughing. I was like, <laughs> laughing at her. You were laughing at your niece. She was terrified on a day out. I liked your face, Jimmy. Do the Maybe. face again of her being terrified. Oh, she was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was she? Sorry. Was she? Was she in a Michael Jackson thriller video? <laughs> Extreme terrified. <laughs> no, no, but that's how terrified. Can we have it one more time? I'm like, could you do Mr. Bojangles or whatever it was called? <laughs> and then I would have terrified. It'd be great. A little playlet. Mr. Bojangles! <laughs> Most people would rather pay for cosmetic surgery than join a gym. True or false? What do you think, Jamelia? No way. No way. Like, no way. People have you ever had anything done? Got that, no. Would you have anything done? No, I mean... For me? May... <laughs> Botox. How much? Botox do you have? I haven't got any... Well, I've got, bo I've got Botox done on one side, but I only got one side done. I don't think you really noticed, but I've had... <laughs> Side done, and then I left that side, but I didn't have money for both. But I'm getting the other side done next week. <laughs> can you tell which one? Can yes. you tell the before and after? You look like a Picasso I don't painting think you had... of yourself. Only a photo, I think you had a stroke. <laughs> Shouldn't really joke about strokes. If you have a stroke, you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can tell you the answer is false. 79% of people would rather join a gym. All the celebrities get plastic surgery these days. Colleen Rooney just had some work done on her arsehole. <laughs> He's had a hair transplant. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. Top gadget that makes British people happy. What, what makes you happy? Generally in my life, I would say the gadget that's blown my mind the most is the uh, boiled egg slicer. <laughs> It's like a little cradle, and you just put you put the egg to bed, and it says, "All right, Mr. Egg, you're going to be." Boom! <laughs> <laughs> also, get a uh, pickled onion grabber. <laughs> uh, is it your hand? <laughs> <It's not laughs> <a gadget. laughs> oh. It is for you, Mr. Vinegar Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Curse my vinegar fingers! <laughs> It just looks like a pen. You press it, <laughs> little prongs come out like that. Pickled onion, madam. There we go. <laughs> the ladies must yeah. just swoon. <laughs> the only problem is he's had to take it next door to someone to open the jar for him. <laughs> uh, Mr Bronson, could you open my pickled onion jar? <laughs> I've got some ladies coming round. <laughs> Topway Brits break the law. I think well, the main one is, because uh, the, the British penchant, uh, <laughs> for urinating in public is quite big. I was on a tube train the other day. A tube a train? A tube train, and a man had a piss in the corner. <laughs> and what, typical British, we were, we were like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he got off at the next stop, and I had to break the silence. I said, thank God he didn't need a shit. <laughs> Worst thing to do in a job interview. It's a bad idea to refer to yourself throughout the interview as Lord Party Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a cape. <laughs> top hat as well. Top hat would be, wouldn't be very good, would it? But just a top hat and a cape. <laughs> and then you'd drawn a big mouth on your tummy. <laughs> and you did that so it looked like it was <laughs> See yourself in five years' time, <laughs> sitting right where you are. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it for us. Good night. You know, it'd be great is if you liked and subscribed. I'm so needy. I'm so sorry. Uh, and why not come and see me live? And uh, the tickets are available at sarahwilkin.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.